friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And today I'm going to be talking about the fermentation starter. Now those who have been following me for a long time already know you've probably seen a couple of my videos on how to make a fermentation starter. Yet I thought it'd be a good idea to do another one so that I could update you on a few things because I do get a lot of questions on the fermentation starter, what you can use, how long it will last, and all that. So I'm going to try to cover all that in today's video and if you have any other questions that maybe I forget to answer I still forget to answer in this video please put them in comments down below so I can get back to you and maybe shoot yet another video down the road so let's get started on how to make it now actually the way I make my fermentation starter is even easier than originally the way I was doing it so what let's start with what you can use Basically, any fruit that you have on hand basically should work as well as fresh raw ginger. Fresh raw ginger is actually, uh, when you do it with a with ginger, it's called a ginger bug. But since ginger is hard for us to come by and it's really expensive, fresh ginger anyway, when we do find it and it doesn't grow well here, I started coming up with ideas and ways I can make a starter using other things besides ginger. And everything I've done so far has worked well. Now, one thing I do say is I don't recommend using frozen or canned, even though I've never actually tried making a starter with either one of these types of fruits. My guess is the canned fruits have probably got all the goodness killed out of them, so it may not yield a good result. And when I've tried making vinegar using frozen fruit, um, I just never got really good vinegar out of it. It started to turn to vinegar and then it just kind of went flat and then stale and then rotted. So um, it could be something that happens in the freezing process that prevents, you know, that maybe kills off a lot of the yeast and stuff. And yes, despite what some people are saying, Yeast is on fruit. It is a, uh, you can find yeast on just about anything. So typically using a fresh or dried fruit is going to be your best choice, especially if it still has the skin on it. However, I have made a fermentation starter with peaches using fresh peaches with no skin and it turned out really good. Okay, so what I have right here is a my current fermentation starter, which actually I say current as in now, but it's actually was started with blueberries and currants that I grew in my garden. And then when I did some cider pressing, I added, just to add more fruit to it, some apple pieces in there from the, the remains of the pressing out the apples. And so today I'm gonna ba I'm gonna show you a couple different things you can do with one that you already have going. But let's start with making a fresh one. Now to start my fresh fermentation starter, raisins are one of the quickest and best things you can use. The great thing about a raisin fermentation starter is it blends well with just about anything you're gonna use it in to ferment, whether it be bread or vegetables or anything. I'm gonna just throw into this pint-sized jar a couple of handfuls of raisins. Now, because raisins are naturally pretty sweet, there's really no need to add sugar to this right now. In fact, I would suggest don't put any sugar in it yet. Give it some time. But I'm gonna go ahead and add the water all the way up to here. I'm gonna leave a little bit of head space so I'll have room to add sugar to it down the road now the water you use is pretty important because you don't want to use city tap water unless you've dechlorinated it because the chlorine is going to slow or even prevent a ferment to happen at all. So I never use city tap water. The only water I use, uh, well it's the only water we even consume, is our own filtered rainwater. And that way I know I have no chlorine, I have no fluoride. What I want to do is put a lid on there and I'm gonna shake it up a little bit and that's it now all I need to do is let it sit for at least three days it can take up to five sometimes longer depending on how cool it is in your house and what will happen is this will start to get fizzy now what I'll recommend if you're using raisins and you didn't add sugar to it like I didn't here because you don't want to start with something too much sugar in it because too much sugar can actually slow down the fermentation process 
However, you have to have some sugar in order for the bacteria and yeast to have something to feed off of. That is how you get your ferment. And by the way, I have a video just on um, the basics of fermenting where I talk about some of the different types of ferments that I will go ahead and link to down below in the description box so you can check that out. And I cover some of this stuff in that video as well. But I talk about other types of ferments. So anyway, um, I would say in about after about 24 hours, go ahead and add maybe a teaspoon of sugar to this. And then in the, the next 24 hours, add another teaspoon. But don't add any right off the bat, you know, because the raisins already have so much sugar in them already. So other options you can use are freeze-dried fruits. I have successfully made a really good fermentation starter using freeze-dried sour cherries. I think I've used freeze-dried pineapple. I know I've used fresh pineapple, which makes an excellent fermentation starter. There's mangoes, uh, raspberries. I've used freeze-dried raspberries to make a fermentation starter. You can be any of your own home dried fruits like peaches, apples, or anything that you have anything especially if you style the skin on it it's really going to be effective and don't forget that raw ginger if you grow ginger that's a great option or if you can get it for a good price organic raw ginger uh, make sure that when you use it you, when you chop it up leave the skin on that's that's really going to be the best thing for making a good ginger bug or fermentation starter. goji berries also make a really good one so if you have home dried blueberries raspberries strawberries anything like that Fresh is always, always really good too, um, but either one works well. Fresh is usually going to give you the quickest result, but uh, raisins are dried and they're they're actually the very quickest I've found. Uh, blueberries when they're fresh are uh, the slowest to get going, but they also seem to make a nice long lasting fermentation starter that doesn't, uh, I don't know, it just seems to last longer and hold up better. So when it comes to fresh fruit, blueberry is my favorite. Uh, raisin is great because of the flavor, but one thing about the raisins that you will find is over time, because I always leave the fruit in there. I don't filter the fruit out. I only filter it out from what I'm taking out to use in whatever I'm gonna ferment. But raisins kind of get mushy and start to break up and uh, make it really cloudy and weird in there. So that's the only thing about the raisins I don't like, the raisin fermentation starter. Uh, what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to uh, Normally, I would just leave this because it's got blueberries in it, but just to show you one way that you can take some fermentation starter you already have if you want to refresh it and add some new fruit and just kind of get it going all over again. Maybe it's starting to turn to wine, but it's as long as it's still bubbly, you can refresh it. This one is very bubbly because I use it regularly. But anyway, simply strain out your fruit. Make sure if you're using a metal strainer, it's stainless steel only. Otherwise, use a nylon mesh. Now, if you're interested in these, I'll put my affiliate link to the set that I have, or at least one very much like it. I think it is actually the same set. I think it's just a different length than the one I originally purchased. But uh, it's a set of three, and I use them all the time for straining out vinegar and all kinds of different things. Stainless steel isn't going to hurt your ferment because it's non-reactive. Now, if you have chickens, this is really great to throw out to the chickens. They love this stuff. Now, some people asked if it would be good using these in bread just keep in mind a lot of times these are very tart very sour taste kind of like vinegar uh, the the fruit and especially since I leave it in for such a long time because um, I've left my fruit in my fermentation starter for up to a year and it's been good but by that time there's actually there's really not a whole lot of nutrition left in it and there's not a lot of flavor as such as you know the fruit it just tastes like either like wine or like vinegar it might be good in a fruit cake or something like that if you like that kind of thing but what I like to do is I like to give this to the chickens because they adore this stuff. So I'll be dumping, throwing this out to them and it's just another way they can get some goodness because, you know, it is, it's got, still got the good active bacteria and stuff in there that will be good for their gut health. Now there's my fermentation starter and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pour this in a clean pint sized jar. I'm going to add a little bit of sugar to it. Now, I like to use uh, organic cane sugar because it's cheap, it's natural, and it's organic. I put about a tablespoon in there. You can go as little as a teaspoon. Um, it just depends on how long it's sat. 
Now, if I had bees and I had my own access to honey, honey is an excellent option. Um, this is my favorite honey if I'm not getting like a local raw honey. As far as one to buy elsewhere, the Glory Bee, this is out of Oregon. Uh, black Raw blackberry honey is my very favorite. It has the best flavor. It's raw. It's got that creamy texture to it that certain types of honey have. And, and it is my favorite, but because I don't, I don't want to waste it in a fermentation starter because you know all that good flavor and stuff is kind of going to be wasted in the ferment in fermentation starter now if you're worried about sugar content remember it's fermented the ferment the bacteria and the yeast you have to have sugar of some sort for them to feed off of so if you're going sugar free as far as you know honey coconut sugar cane sugar anything like that uh, these will not work i do not know about monk sugar i've never tried it but stevia will not work you cannot use stevia as a replacement or anything like that as a replacement in your fermentation starter or anything that you're fermenting it has to be a real sugar of some sort uh coconut sugar could be an option but if you're going to use it only put in a pinch because what i found i never use coconut sugar in fermenting because what i found with coconut sugar is the high mineral content will slow down and sometimes even stop or prevent uh, your ferment so use it very sparingly if you decide to add it just to have a little bit of minerals in there but the minerals will kill or slow down that ferment process so I don't recommend it. I reckon my the two I recommend the most are the cane sugar or the honey. Now, because I like to always keep some sort of fruit in there, and I don't, you know, the, we're in the time of the year, there's no fresh fruits coming out of the garden, no fresh raspberries, strawberries, or blueberries, then I'm going to use some of my Mother Earth Products freeze-dried raspberries to add in there. So I'm just going to put a handful, since this is already, well, I'll put a little bit more. Since this has already got, you know, it's already going, um, I don't personally know that it's necessary to always keep some kind of fruit in there. I just think it's going to keep it healthier that way, and especially changing it out every so often. I think by adding more fruit to it on occasion is going to help add more nutrients back into the fermentation starter that will otherwise get watered down and uh, over time. And I'll explain why that would happen in a little bit. So I'm going to put the lid on. Notice on this one I'm using a recycled peanut butter jar lid with a canning lid inside it to get make it more airtight or more, you know, spill proof. And I'm just going to shake that up a little bit to kind of mix up that sugar and get that fruit mixed in there. Listen to that. You now it's from shaking it. See, it's or because it's already it's already fermented so I'm just adding to it and refreshing it now both of these this I'll leave on the counter for the rest of the day and I'll probably put it back in the fridge tomorrow or later tonight but this one because it's a new one started it needs to stay out for at least three days you'll know it's ready when it's really fizzy so raisins typically within three days but again remember the temperature of your house is going to affect how quickly it ferments so it could take longer so don't get dismayed if it's three or four days and it's still not very fizzy just give it time that you like i said the temperature will affect it one thing you can do is if you have a refrigerator or anything it tends to stay warmer put it on top of there or keep it in a warmer place i like i used to always keep my fermentation starter on top of my refrigerator rather than in it all the time but when I did that I had to feed it pretty much every day to keep it alive so once it's ready once it's done once it's fully fizzy you have options you don't have to refrigerate it but refrigerating it prevents you from having to feed it all the time and go through so much sugar if you're using it daily or every couple of days then keeping it out is no big deal because it's always best to to add to it and add more sugar to it and let it ferment another day before you use it again anyway so leaving it out is not a big deal but i don't use mine every day maybe once a week so it always goes back in the fridge and i refresh it or add more sugar to it feed it once i use it so feeding your fermentation starter on a regular basis is really important to keep it alive again if you're using it on a regular basis it's not something you have to think about um, actually there's times that I don't do much fermenting at all I might go a couple months without needing my fermentation starter in that case it's a really good idea to try to remember to check it once a week and add a little bit of sugar I'd say at least a teaspoon of sugar take it out of your fridge if that's where you're keeping it 
put it on your counter, add a little bit of sugar, stir it in with either stainless steel or wooden spoon, or even a chopstick, a wooden chopstick, and then just let it sit on the counter for the rest of the day, make sure it's good and bubbly, put it back in the fridge. And the same thing goes when you actually use it. So when you use it, you're gonna take some of the liquid out, then after you're done, you know, after you've used all you're gonna use out of it, top it back off with some water. You don't necessarily need to add more fruit at that point unless you want to, but then make sure you get a teaspoon up to a ta tablespoon, no more than that, of sugar added back into the water. You can choose, and I used to do this, you can choose to make a whole quart jar of fermentation starter at a time. In that case, I do recommend starting by just doing half of the jar first and then adding to it until you got you have it full over that three day period. Add a little sugar and a little water until you got it full. But with such a small amount like this, you can even do a half pint. There's no need to keep adding sugar and water to it every day. Now tomorrow, like I said, tomorrow because this is fresh, um, I, I will be adding a little bit of sugar, but not till tomorrow and the next day. If I had started this one fresh with just the raspberries or pineapple or anything else or ginger, I'd, I'd be adding sugar to it now and for the next few days. So, um, oh yeah, I forgot because this looks like I had used it a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and I put that sugar in there. I meant to say I'm going to go ahead and add some more water back in here so I can get a full pint. Which was the reason I added the sugar, because I knew I was going to add some more water to it. So anytime you add more water, you got to add more sugar. So here's the deal. If you forget it, let's say it sits in there for two weeks uh, to a month, and you go to check it, and if it has no fizz to it at all, and it just smells and tastes like wine, then it's it's done. There's There's probably no bringing it back at that point but it's not that big a deal. You can always start another one with any of the fruits that you have on hand, as long as they're either fresh, dehydrated or freeze dried, and just, just start another batch. And then take that other fermentation starter that is no longer a fermentation starter and use it in your cooking and baking. You know, me, I like to use wine in cooking noodles. I like to add it to my sauces or to sautés and many other things. So those are some good options you can use it for or even use it as an extract. So if you check out my many ways to use your homemade wine, uh, even if you don't drink, go. I'll go ahead and put that video down below. So that will give you some more ideas of what you can do with that fermentation starter if it's gone past that point where where it's it's no longer bubbly now if it's been sitting in there for a while and it still has some fizz to it it still has some bubble to it go ahead you know you shake it and it kind of fizzes like this one did then go ahead and try to see if you can refresh it by simply putting it out in a warm place and add some sugar to it make sure you stir it up and then just watch it over the next two three days if it starts to get fizzy again it might within a few hours or by the end of the three days, it might be really, really fizzy, then you can refrigerate it again. You may want to add a little bit more sugar though if you left it out for three days. Add a little bit more sugar before you put it back into the refrigerator in case you forget about it again because it's going to need that sugar to feed off of. All right, so now let's talk about the many uses for your fermentation starter. Now, a fermentation starter is just one of the many ways you can ferment various things, including things that you would normally do a lacto-fermentation where you use the salt brine method, and that's all going to be completely a matter of choice. I've done, I've made kimchi for many years. I learned how to make it all on my own, doing internet research. This was long before YouTube and trying to find recipes and then came up with my own recipe on, on kimchi making. And I used to make it the old fashioned way where it, it fermented for two weeks. Great stuff. We loved it. Well, at least me and my oldest son loved it. But then when I started messing around with creating the fermentation starter, I thought, why not try this in my kimchi making and see how that works? Now, when you're doing kimchi the old fashioned way, it's typically up to two weeks in cold storage. If you're leaving it out on your counter, it's usually three to five days. But I, I learned how to do it the cold storage. So either in a refrigerator or, you know, the, the way it was traditionally done was buried in crocks in the ground, in the cold ground. So it would stay insulated and cool. And it was left there for two weeks. So that, that's the traditional way, but you can put it on your counter and let it, no matter which method you use and give it at least three days or longer. So I did try doing the kimchi. I actually have a video on this, but it's really old, 
but you know I'll go ahead and link to that down below but anyway you can do that you just don't need to use as much salt that's the great thing about it that's one of the things I prefer about using the fermentation starter for fermenting kimchi and other types of vegetables you can add some salt I which I do just mostly for flavor so for maybe a quart jar of a fermented vegetable I might put up to a tablespoon of salt that's only going to be for flavor so when you measure it out how this works is it doesn't matter Matter what it is you're fermenting if you're gonna do a quart jar this is easy to remember a quart jar quarter cup of fermentation starter so all you do is filter it out filter out the fruit measure out a quarter cup and put it in your jar whatever it is you're fermenting so if you've already put the other liquid in there I always say put the fermentation starter in first and then add your water after that so that way you know you have enough you can go a little bit more on the fermentation starter that's no big deal but you don't want to go less so it's the same idea same concept as using whey so if you're fermenting beets you're making a beet kvass I've done it with whey but I've also done it using the fermentation starter starter same results same thing with fermenting eggs I have videos on I don't know if I have one on making um, the beet kvass I think I might but I know I have one on fermenting garlic which I don't have out here and I have one on you know I have some on fermenting vegetables and I have one on fermenting eggs I'll link to what I'll do is just go ahead and link to the whole playlist ferment playlist down below so you can go to that playlist and then you can scroll through there and find the different uh, things I've done with the fermentation starter in there. So quarter cup to quart jar. If you're gonna do a whole gallon, like I've got a gallon of wine back here, and yes, I use my fermentation starter to make my homemade wine. So with that, instead of having to buy a wine yeast or use a bread yeast or anything like that, and I have a whole playlist on winemaking, I use one whole cup of the fermentation starter in the jug of wine so it's the same thing with the wine that when i'm filling that up i make sure i either leave enough space to add that whole cup of fermentation starter or i add that in first and then add the juice in so i make sure that that's in there and it's always worked great for me for making wine you can also make your own homemade natural soda which is the same idea as making the wine except so let's say i only want to make a quart this works for smoothies too Put your quarter cup of fermentation starter in there and then fill it up with whatever juice, whether it be a store-bought juice, a homemade juice like I did with the sparkling cider, and then let it sit for three days and you've got a nice fizzy, fermented, healthy, natural soda. I love that. It's one of my favorite things to do in the summertime with different juices. It will make it less sweet because the fermentation starter is going to work through some of the sugars that are in that. But if you're looking for something that's lower sugar, that's one way to do it. Use your fermentation starter. You're adding good health, gut healthy bacteria and yeast in there as well as um, decreasing the amount of sugar that's in the juice. Now I've also used this, as some of you know, to make my own fermented hot sauce. And I have a video on that as well. And it's really good stuff. Keep in mind, one of the reasons I like to keep my ferments in the fridge, the bacteria and the yeast are going to continue to work through that sugar if you leave it out. And it's going to cause it to also bubble over very possibly if you don't have a really tight lid or build up too much pressure that's why i don't like keeping them at room temperature so it's best keeping them stored somewhere cold whether it be your fridge or in a root cellar to prevent having either of those things happen and also to extend the life of the of a lively ferment because otherwise eventually it's going to work through all the sugars and then it's going to turn whatever you got either to vinegar or to wine and you may not that may not be a desirable result depending on what it is you're fermenting and i have fermented so many things um and you can again check out that playlist i've made a calendula type kimchi i've made nasturtium kimchi but another thing that's very different from all of these is the bread because I've, I've experimented. I actually haven't done any more experimenting with the bread in a long time, but I do have videos on how to use the fermentation starter as a yeast replacement when you're making bread. And it does work. It's a little more tricky and it takes more time. Um, it can take three days to get it, to get it a little more fluffy. One of the things I do still like to do is add the fermentation starter to the bread even when I'm using the dry yeast in the bread because it's just going to make it more fluffy, especially when you're working with 
uh, heavier weight breads that are like whole wheat or you've got a lot of seeds and other things like that in it like I tend to like to do the fermentation starter will just help help feed it more help give it more fluffiness you can do that as a yeast re entire yeast replacement um, so in a pinch uh, or, or maybe something catastrophic happens you have no way to get yeast from the store or from wherever you can make your own like this and use that as your yeast replacement and start working with with that for making your breads and then the last thing i wanted to talk about is how long will the fermentation starter last well basically i think you can make it last forever as long as you keep feeding it and every so often refresh it like i did with this one straining out the fruit adding some fresh fruit to it a little more water a little more sugar and then just you know get it real lively like it's a like it's a brand new starter all over again the only difference is with this is i can put it back in the refrigerator tonight rather than having to wait three or to five days as i will with this one here but uh, as long as you keep up on it and keep it healthy it can last for a very long time i've had mine last for well over a year keeping it in the fridge and keeping up on it will will extend that life forever but me i like to always experiment with new fruits and and di you know different types of things to just for flavors and stuff to see what happens and what i have found is like i said is the raisin is best all the way around or the ginger like if you're doing kimchi and that kind of stuff a more savory thing ginger is a really really good one to do but the raisin does well all the way across the board for all of them and then of course any of the berry ones you know, any of the other fruit ones work great in your breads for, or for fermenting any kind of fruit juice anything like that or your wine okay well don't forget to check out the playlist down below if you're interested in any of the other ways that I use the fermentation starter and if I missed anything that I meant to cover don't forget to ask those questions down below so that I can answer them for you all right well I hope you enjoyed this video and that maybe you learned something new thanks for watching take care and God bless